The officials in Colorado Springs say plans regarding a moratorium on building in landslide areas are changing. We'll explain why their views on the matter are shifting in a bit. Good morning, Colorado. It's 8 a.m. Saturday, May 28th. I'm Angelica Lombardi. Bonnie Silkman has the day off. Well, let's go ahead now and take a live look at Manitou Springs. 45 degrees, not too bad. Wind three miles per hour, so pretty calm out there. Looks like a beautiful Saturday. I'm sure a lot of people will be heading over there for the Memorial Day weekend. Let's go ahead now and check with Storm Tracker 13 Jay Polk. And Jay, how's Saturday shaping up? Well, you know what? It's looking pretty good right now. We're seeing plenty of sunshine as we start off our morning, and we'll see slightly warmer temperatures as we end off the afternoon. However, there will be a chance for some showers and storms this afternoon. And it will be even stormier as we go through the second half of the weekend with possibilities for severe weather, especially in the southeastern plains. That's three of the things that we're tracking for you as we go through this weekend around southern Colorado. Right now, wind speeds are sitting between 5 and 15 miles per hour around the region, so it's not necessarily all that windy, but we have seen some wind in some places. And we'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Live HD Doppler radar. Well, we're not seeing too much right now in the way of any kind of showers either, but those showers will pop back up as we go through the afternoon. Isolated rumbles of thunder starting in the mountains, making their way towards the plains as we go through our day today. Temperatures already sitting in the lower to middle 50s, 53 in the springs, 55 in Pueblo, 50 in Canyon City. Lower to middle 50s also as you head out into the eastern plains. Temperatures in the mountains are sitting in the 30s and 40s, 35 at Leadville, 42 in Salida, 40 right now. In Alamosa. Skycast as we go through the rest of the afternoon is going to call for this chance for showers and storms starting at around noon. And then by 2 o'clock, you begin to see a chance for showers and storms make its way through the Pikes Peak region and points eastward with some isolated rumbles of thunder mixed in. Small hail, gusty winds are all possible as we go through the rest of the afternoon into the evening before things begin to fade away as we go into our early. Sunday morning. So your forecast then as you go out and about today, what you're going to have to have is sunglasses and the umbrella too as temperatures are going to top out in the 60s and 70s, 70s to right around 80 degrees out in the eastern plains and we drop it back a bit by 6 o'clock and we do see a continued chance for some of those showers and storms around, especially in the springs. Details in that seven day forecast let you know what's happening around the region and why there's a possibility for severe weather tomorrow and into Monday coming up in just a couple of minutes. Angelica. All right, thanks so much, Jay. New overnight, one man is in the hospital in Pueblo this morning after a drive-by shooting. Pueblo police tell us the victim was walking near the intersection of Santa Fe and 8th Street when a car pulled up and opened fire. The man was hit and later taken to Parkview Hospital. Investigators tell us his injuries are not life-threatening. The identity of the gunman and the description of the car have not been released. We're following the latest on an arrest made yesterday in Pueblo. The arrest comes after shots were fired at officers. Joe Gatino Romero was arrested Friday afternoon. He was wanted for first degree assault on a police officer. We previously told you 25 year old Kindalira Deadman was arrested on charges of vehicular eluding. Her brother, 19 year old Daniel Deadman, was also arrested. Now, officers are still looking for 19 year old Angelina Padilla. She's considered a person of interest. Now, this all comes after shots were fired at officers working a traffic stop near Northern Avenue and Bellu Avenue early Thursday morning. No one was hurt. Well, we're getting a more up to date look at the main suspect in the Daryl Ritz homicide case. Gustavo Torres Gonzalez was booked into the Criminal Justice Center yesterday after receiving treatment for a head injury. He is facing charges of first degree murder and criminal impersonation. El Paso County deputies think Daryl Ritz may have had a confrontation with Torres Gonzalez as he was checking on a family property on Judge Orr Road. A woman who was wanted on several charges in northern Colorado is now in custody here in Colorado Springs. The Greeley Police Department asked Colorado Springs police to help them track down 34-year-old Nicole Archuleta Aguirre. She was wanted on aggravated robbery and kidnapping charges. CSPD found her at a home in the 1900 block of Kaplan Drive yesterday. She was taken into custody without incident. Another man is in custody this morning after allegedly assaulting a police officer. Investigators say 27-year-old Donnie New was pulled over on South 14th Street and evaluated for a DUI. He was arrested but later tried to escape from the officer's car. Police say he tried to punch the officer before he was hit with a stun gun. That man is now facing charges of second-degree assault and driving under the influence. 
Well, Colorado law enforcement is stepping up their DUI campaign this weekend. Extra patrol began yesterday and will be lasting throughout next Tuesday. Now, during this time last year, more than 300 arrests were made over the Memorial Day weekend. Investigators also say the holiday weekend is the worst weekend for alcohol-related fatalities. For the past eight years, about 61% of all deadly accidents involving alcohol were reported over Memorial Day. The mother of a Colorado Springs woman involved in a missing persons case says she's not happy with the corruption charges surrounding former El Paso County Sheriff Terry Makita. Carol Nichols has been missing from Colorado Springs since 2012. Her mother says she was heading to Denver but hasn't been seen since. The alarming indictment handed down to Makita and two other members of his staff have Julia Nichols questioning if her daughter's case was ever handled properly. It's hard to believe that um, people who were elected to a trusted position in law enforcement uh, who could have come so far in the public's trust could behave that way. Julia Nichols now feels like previous assurances from Makita staff were a little more than lip service, and she's now asking for Kara's case to be reopened. The Colorado Springs City Council says that their views on construction and landslide zones are shifting a bit. The first suggestion on the subject was a moratorium, which was something that Mayor John Southers and the building industry have opposed. But now two council members, Don Knight and Tom Strand, think that they have a better idea. They're drafting an ordinance that could tightly regulate construction in and around landslide zones. A lot of property on the west side of 25 uh, it could be compromised. You know, that's could, not will. And uh, we want to make sure that people are making wise decisions on where they're building and, and property they're buying so they understand if there's a risk that's there. I'm very concerned that similar to previous ordinances or previous uh, moratoriums uh, for construction in landslide areas haven't been uh, enforced. The councilmen say that they felt the need to act after seeing landslides destroy or threaten dozens of homes. Both Knight and Strand hope to have a draft of an ordinance read by the end of June. Well, while people usually use Memorial Day weekend as a time for barbecues and vacationing, Canyon City, of course, is planning to fill the skies with dozens of balloons. It's all part of the Great Canyon City Balloon Classic that's underway this morning. But, Cara, what's the status on the balloons? How is weather playing a factor in this today? Well, Angelica, as you can see behind me, the balloons are standing right now, but they will not take off. And with more on that, I have Robert Brown. He's an organizer here with the Classic. And Robert, why won't they take off? Well, we just had a little too much wind this morning. Uh, Mother Nature isn't cooperating quite as well as we'd hope, but uh, air temperature's coming up. The event's going to be great, but the balloons are just not going to be able to get in the air this morning. How important is the weather in this aspect when it comes to these hot air balloons? Well, it's a critical aspect. You know, it's, it's kind of an exciting part of this because uh, we've got to have just those perfect.